haven't looked at these for 20 years. Um, I don't go back over these things usually. Not because I want to put them away, but because I do have very clear memories, details uh, of extraordinary scenes. But they do bring back little things. Rickshaws. We use rickshaws all the time. I've forgotten. Now you have Beijing full of cars, taxis, um, and only a few people on bicycles. We were on rickshaws all over the place with a heavy camera and a heavy cameraman trying to dash around. We hardly got any sleep. We didn't dare. There was an entire army outside, and it was shooting people. It went on for days. Oh, well, we were right in amongst it. And then, as troop lorries were seen moving down the road, there was gunfire from those lorries. A huge volley of shots just as I left the front line caused panic. The young man in front of me fell dead. I fell over him. Two others were killed yards away. Two more people lay wounded on the ground near me. I, I felt a huge conviction that we should stay on the streets for as long as possible. And I went way beyond the boundaries which I would normally set about how dangerous it was getting. I went way beyond that. I decided to stay and get the pictures. A lot of things going on. Tanks, soldiers, APCs, students running, people shot, bicycles taking people away, and injured people. It was mayhem. We took a woman to hospital who had been shot in her house. Bullet had gone through the wall. We picked up a woman with a bullet in the head and took her to the nearby children's hospital into a scene of near mayhem. We ended up at the children's hospital, it turned out, which was a scene of carnage. The floor was deep in blood, wasn't running with it. We were wading through blood. And they were slinging bodies onto the floor, and people who died or were brought in dead, because they had so many injured to deal with. It was mayhem, absolute mayhem. But all the time, there were ordinary Chinese people who helped us. The operating theatre was overflowing, many of the staff in tears. In 20 minutes, 40 seriously injured were brought for emergency surgery. Two were already dead. After hours of shooting and facing a line of troops, the crowd is still here. They're shouting, stop the killing and down with the government. Not a lot of the deaths occurred on the square. They occurred all around Beijing. We went miles along one of the main roads, coming time and again down to the intersections and seeing bodies and seeing shooting and seeing injured people. Um, and at one of the big crossroad areas, Fushing Men, there are a lot of dead people. And these were ordinary people who walked out of their houses at night thinking, hmm, what's all the noise? And they were shot where they stood with high-powered rifles and the bullets cannoning down these streets. That's where a lot of people were killed. The troops have been firing indiscriminately, but still there are thousands of people on the streets who will not move back. At four in the morning, after four hours of killing, there were Thousands of people still on the streets, in front of the army, almost eyeballing them. Nobody ran. They all trusted the army so much. They had it rammed into their brains for decades that the army loves the people. And so they didn't think they were going to be killed. Thousands of them. They just stood there, shouting at their army, sometimes singing. That tells you something special happened in that square.
On the main road east of the square at 10.23 this morning, there was a sudden and deadly volley from the troops. The crowd ran, and bodies were left flying in the road. Between 30 and 40 people were killed. The killing continued all through the next day. The atmosphere was chaotic, the streets full of danger. I'd filed to London on the phone live, again and again, and somewhere at about breakfast time, I was in my room, and I couldn't stop crying. And I couldn't stop thinking about the little couple I'd seen in one of the tiny little houses, traditional houses down an alleyway, with thin walls. And the old man had tugged at me. I'd been on the pavement watching the troops going past, and he pulled me in. And there, lying in front of the television, was his wife with a bullet in her. The bullet had come through the wall from hundreds of yards away. He was beyond emotion. He, he was stunned, uh, and so was I. Over the following days, bodies continued to be scattered along Chang'an Avenue. The tanks lauded it over the square. The government was back in control. And then, a massive column of tanks coming down. And out pops this man, just below us. White shirt, black trousers, and a plastic carrier bag. Mr. Ordinary. And he stands right in front of a tank rolling towards him. And this strange little pantomime took place. I remember we stood on the balcony in some fear that the Chinese would roll over him. But in a way, he, he did, I suppose, to us, symbolize the kind of behavior that ordinary Chinese were indulging in then. They stood there. They confronted their army in a way that very few other people would.